the stand up landing thing is is partly about um, the way that you flare and it's partly about the body position. You know, so that's one of the things that we try to address, which is why I hang everybody up, even though sometimes that's a, a tall order. You know, my my past two courses had 17 people. Oh, and, wow. I, and I hung every single one of them up for at least like 10 minutes. <laughs> it was because it's so effective. It, it costs me time. Yes, it's a lot of work. And I come, you know, I come home very tired that day. But it's just, it's amazing how when, when you hang somebody up in their own rig, right? I don't want to hang you up in some, somebody else's rig. And just in terms of your, your the mechanics of their of your motion, you know, the way that you, you know, are you proudly pushing your chest forward or are you pushing your hands forward? Because when you push your hands forward in the flare, now your feet come out in front of you, you're out of balance. And the par parachute's not as much in your control when you lean back. If you're not pressing against the main lift web, you literally lose roll axis stability of the system um, by by being disconnected and loading the yoke. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a habit, you know, that that we all have at the beginning because it's how we're taught. You know, you flare like this, and it just doesn't work if you want to stand up your landing. Uh, you know, it's it, it's that that thing that we see in a lot of uh, aspects of life where we are trying to prevent the worst case scenario so powerfully that we prevent the best case scenario. You can't prepare for a crash and a stand-up simultaneously. Uh, and so that'll be about you know body position and, and working on you know getting into the habit of sweeping your feet back, elbows back as you're pushing the flare. And, and interestingly, I've discovered that leaning forward isn't just about you know reaching your head out. It's about scooting your butt back. Like if you were sitting on a chair that had wheels on it, if as you flare, and you'll hear me say this again, but to scoot the chair back, mine doesn't have wheels, so it's, it creaks. But <laughs> it's it, it really helps to get the chest forward because the whole point is to have your body tilted forward on this at, in this attitude. And that's a bit of this, but it's also that. And, and that's something you can start visualizing now. And, you know, just when nobody's looking at you and you don't feel embarrassed, you just sit there on a chair with wheels on it. And as you as you pull the brakes down, it's down the side of your body, not in tight. I see lots of tip overs from in tight. I also see people reaching for the ground if their hands are too wide and you can't lean forward when your hands are way out. Um, so something in the middle there affords you the ability to thrust your chest forward and your butt back and sweep your feet back underneath your body. And then as you finish the flare and you increase that angle of attack and you're tilting the pitch angle even more, it feels better and better and better as you get deeper into the flare, as opposed to, mm. you know, in front of you where you're leaning your shoulders back and your feet get swung out in front. Mm -hmm. the, the deeper you go into it, the worse it feels, the more vulnerable you feel. Yeah. Um, and so it's just it's just a function of, of you know the pitch change of the system it's normal and as you get to a smaller canopy you know things happen fast you know mm -hmm. I mean, you're 50 jumps in but um it's your brain has to be be able to process and that's uh that's not that easy to do but uh there's there's also a mental component you know <laughs> you've been you've been in the sport long enough that, you know, to recognize that, you know, if I get on final approach, still kind of intense and nervous and breathing poorly, I'm not going to perform as well as when I get myself on the final and I take the time on final to respirate my way into intelligence, you know, to, to bring back my grace and my playful childlike capabilities. My athleticism shows up when I'm happy and it doesn't show up when I'm worried. You know, I mean, this. Uh, I've learned how to worry as a parent. You know, I've learned all about how you know how to project all the possible realities, all the possible mm -hmm. that could go wrong, and in that imagination process, you know, my prefrontal cortical activity is is helping, right? So you can see the oh, don't touch that, and you know, but I, I also do that to myself when I'm in the sky more than I used to, and so I have to recognize. When I'm envisioning a reality that I don't want, like, you know, on final approach, here we go again, you know, that's worry in the driver's seat. And I got to recognize it and, and pop, pop that thought bubble or whatever, you know, get off that thought stream 
and and see what I desire, even if it's something I haven't done before. I have to see it in my mind and believe in myself. And we all have that, you know, sort of back and forth between the you know the the faithless and the faithful. At 900, fitting to the outside a little bit, starting my turn a little before the target. And I'm going to do breaks, off, double fronts, and then a carve towards the final, drive it on down. And this is a crabbing landing, so I'm going to lean on my left leg strap and carve my way into the target. To bring back my greats and my playful childlike capabilities, my athleticism shows up when I'm happy to respirate my way into intelligence. <laughs> 